Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at the Indianapolis Zoo and we are here to film a special collaboration video with several other YouTubers. We have Tiffany from Altos Wildlife Sanctuary. We have Alex Collins, Going Wild with Satchel Snow, Shelby on Safari, and the Wildlife Brothers. We are filming this collaboration to celebrate the work that zoos do and breeding programs through the SSP and hopefully bringing animals that are threatened or endangered back out to the wild where they belong. The animal that I chose is the Guam Rail and the Micronesian Kingfisher. I chose these animals because it has a personal connection to me because I've had a bunch of family members who were stationed in Guam. My dad was stationed in Guam when he was in the Air Force. My grandpa was stationed in Guam. I've had a bunch of family friends who were stationed in Guam. So they all have very similar stories that relate back to the Micronesian Kingfisher, the Guam Rail, and the Brown Tree Snake. The Brown Tree Snake was introduced to the island of Guam and a couple other surrounding islands during World War II hopped on some boats and on the planes, they came over to the military base and just kind of ran wild. So the brown tree snake has no natural predators in Guam, as there was no real carnivores or no real predators of size in Guam. So they were able to go around and eat all these bird species like the Micronesian kingfisher, the Guam rail, and 11 other bird species to the point where they are extinct in the wild. So there are several other zoos like the St. Louis Zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo, and the Smithsonian kind of close to Washington DC and they were working together to help breed these birds such as the Guam rail and introduce them back to the wild. Although they are not introduced back to the island of Guam they have been reintroduced onto several other islands around Guam where there is no reported signs of brown tree snakes and there are also teams that are out there that I've worked with in the past in other videos and they are working to eradicate the brown tree snake on the island of Guam and prevent the spread of the brown tree snake onto these other islands with Guam rails or Micronesian kingfishers, um, and was, along with the other 11 bird species, because we can't forget about uh, those guys, I just can't remember all of their names. But with all these um, efforts from the programs that are there in Guam and the surrounding islands and here in the states to reproduce these animals, hopefully there's actually a, a good hope of these animals being returned back to their natural environment. I will have links in the description to all of their channels, because this video would not have been possible without them, but now I'm going to pass you guys along to the Wildlife Brothers. Species survival plans are important for a number of animals that you may not immediately think of as needing our help for conservation. One of those species that we want to highlight for you is the Panamanian golden frog, a beautiful amphibian species endemic to highland river systems in the tropical rainforests of Panama. Now what's interesting about the Panamanian golden frog is that they are a habitat specialist, which means that they can only exist in a very small portion of the ecosystem. Because of this and the habitat destruction caused by humans, this is a species that's presumed to be extinct in the wild, which is why conservation plans are so important for this species. The Panamanian golden frog is facing a number of threats out in the environment. Like most tropical species, they're threatened by rampant habitat destruction, as humans move further into the rainforest seeking space for agricultural development. One threat that is unique to amphibians is the spread of a fungal disease called chytridiomycosis, which has extraordinarily deadly effects on amphibian populations, and is in fact thought to be one of the primary causes for the decline of the Panamanian golden frog in the wild. Amphibians are also heavily threatened by global climate change, as they are incredibly sensitive animals, and any change in the chemical balance of the environment can have drastic effects on their ability to survive out in the ecosystem. As you can see, species survival plans like the ones in place for the Panamanian golden frog are critical to the preservation of this species, and it's important to note that they're not just limited to megafauna and iconic species like bald eagles and elephants. Exactly right, species survival plans are incredibly important for smaller species like the Panamanian golden frog, and we're actually extremely fortunate that we are seeing incredible breeding success with this species in the facilities that are taking care of them, and it's looking hopeful that we will be able to reintroduce introduce the Panamanian golden frog back out into the wild very soon. With a wingspan of up to three meters in length and having a lifespan of about 60 years, the California condor is an impressive bird. Known as a thunderbird, they definitely do rule the skies. But unfortunately, in 1982, only 22 individuals remained. Thus, drastic measures were undertaken to save this bird from the brink of extinction.
the last wild California condor was brought into captivity in 1987. Thanks to captive breeding efforts at a variety of collections across the states, the California condor population increased by almost 200 birds in just 20 years. Hand rearing efforts like using a puppet to mimic a parent in captivity really did help the California condor make a comeback. However, it's not all happily ever after for the California condor. The threats are still very real. Studies show that even though their numbers have improved, in the wild, they are still facing the threat that almost brought them to extinction, lead poisoning. So now that's on us as the future conservationist and conservationists of today. We need to step up and protect species like the California condor from even getting close to the brink of extinction once again. Hey guys, I'm Satchel Snow from the channel Going Wild with Satchel Snow and I'm here today with Cole, Harrison, Evan, Shelby and all the other amazing animal YouTubers to help educate you guys and explain why the American zoos and the zoos across the world are so important in the conservation mission that I've dedicated my life to in preserving endangered and almost extinct animals. And the animal that Cole was so nice to let me present to you guys today was the bald eagle, the symbol of the United States of America and that's because they were almost extinct extinct way back in the 70s because of a pesticide called DDT. It's a ban now, it's illegal in the United States, but what would happen, it would run off because it was a pesticide farmers and just regular homeowners would put it on the ground, it would seep into the groundwater, affect the fish that bald eagles love eating, the birds would eat it, it would either kill them directly or it would make their eggs really brittle and the eggs would break so the birds weren't able to reproduce. And then through the conservation efforts of American zoos and through enactments like the conservation and preservation acts way back in the 60s and early 70s the birds were able to make a rebound in the wild which is amazing and now there's almost 9700 breeding pairs of bald eagles in the lower 48 states and that bird's completely stable now it's awesome that the bird of our country almost was wiped out but through the help of zoos bald eagles were bred in captivity and then re-released into the wild which really helped their population so that's just one of the reasons guys and one of the amazing animals today that that we're showing you how zoos and people in general through conservation efforts can actually save a species. So thank you very much. This was Satchel Snow by Bald Eagle. Oh, I missed. All right, whatever. Hello, uh, I'm Tiffany Schroeder here at Altera's Wildlife Sanctuary. I'm here today with a few scarlet macaws that we have. Uh, scarlet macaws in Costa Rica, uh, their numbers have been decreasing over the years. And so Costa Rica has been working really hard to increase their numbers with breeding programs at other sanctuaries. Uh, we do not breed them, but we are taking care of these two right now, uh, helping to educate people as to why we need to protect these animals and take care of them. We have a lot to say. Uh, so other, other sanctuaries are breeding them to reintroduce them into the wild and get their numbers increased and back uh, high up in the wild. So. That's, that's the goal of, of the Alturas <laughs> and other sanctuaries here in Costa Rica right now. Hello Cole and Happy New Year! I hope that so far 2021 is treating you and your subscribers well. And what better way to get the new year going than with some chat about conservation? Specifically on my side, these guys, this is an Amur leopard. They are extremely rare and in this video I'm going to be talking just a little bit about how zoos and the species survival plan have been fundamental in saving them back from the brink of extinction. Amur leopards are extremely rare. There are thought to only be about 90 left in the wild, most of which exist in far eastern Russia but some in northeastern China as well. They mainly inhabit the colder, temperate regions like the forests or the mountainous rocky areas, which is why they can be so hard to spot, trap and find. Of course they are solitary creatures and so they need to be really well adapted to help them survive those tough elements. One key adaptation is this thick fur. It's so important for them to keep warm, but it can also lead to big issues for them in conservation, because this thick fur is a key target for poachers. Amur leopards are critically endangered in the wild. 
Their numbers at the moment are only about 90 individuals and it's said that at one point they reached as low as 30. The causes for these declines are all of the usual culprits. Poaching for their fur, logging and deforestation causing the loss of their key habitat in the temperate forests, and inbreeding. When a population reaches such low numbers, its risk of inbreeding goes through the roof because it can be harder for animals to find suitable mates. When an animal inbreeds or is inbred, it has much increased risk of susceptibility to disease and other damaging factors. It's crucial that we fight to conserve ammo leopards in the wild and not just in zoos. Preservation of their habitats will help not only the ammo leopards themselves, but also many other species such as their prey species and other big predators like the impressive ammo tigers. Yes, ammo leopards are rare, but there is still some hope. In 2015, Russia approved a plan to reintroduce some captive bred leopards back into the wild. The plan was also to really clamp down on the poaching and to increase the numbers of prey species like deer and wild boar. WWF have played a strong role in the reintroduction of the leopards, and other organisations like WCS and ZSL, the Zoological Society of London, have played a strong role in the research behind this conservation, and to my knowledge, they still are. So to me, this acts as a really strong sign of hope, that zoos, the Species Survival Plan and conservation organisations can together act as a strong fighting force against the possible extinction of an endangered species. It's a really fascinating story, that of the ammo leopards, and I would definitely recommend that you read up a little bit more about it, because it is so interesting. But for now, thank you so much, Nicole, for having me on. Once again, Happy New Year, and I look forward to hearing from everyone else about their particular species. I would like to thank all of the other awesome YouTubers that helped make this video possible. It would definitely not happen without them, and all their clips were very informative, and I really liked watching them all. But I'd also like to thank all the zoos that have helped me get a better appreciation of what conservation uh, means for all these animals. Because without this YouTube channel, without me traveling all over the place to see how different animals uh, are affected by different pro conservation programs and breeding programs, I wouldn't have even had the idea for this video. It would never have even happened at all. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll see you next week.